welcome back to my channel. I am Mackenzie Nelson if you're new here and if you haven't caught up yourself on my whole YouTube page, I just traveled from Mexico all the way down to Peru in a total of six months. It was a crazy adventure and I am here to help you plan your trip to Ecuador. Also, don't mind that I'm sitting on the floor. Don't quite know why, but it's just comfortable. Anyways, I'm gonna go through my whole itinerary of how I traveled Ecuador, give you the best hostel recommendations and things to do, and a few tips towards the end of the video. So I entered Ecuador from Colombia by bus. It was a very long journey of like 26 hours crossing the border. I do recommend it though, it was a lot cheaper than flying, but if you are just traveling Ecuador, you might be landing in Quito, so that is where I am starting. That is also where I started coming from Colombia. Now, Quito was a great city. It was kind of alarming that I got a few notices to be careful from the police themselves. I suppose pickpocketing and trickery is very common in Ecuador, that they said that they will throw egg or flour at you and then steal whatever you have on your person. So just really be careful who you talk to, be careful who you interact with. But Quito is a wonderful city full of culture, full of great architecture, there's so many things to do within the city. My biggest recommendation for Quito is staying at Community Hostel. They are probably by far the best hostel people I have ever met. The staff and the volunteers there, they were amazing. If you have followed my journey, you saw that I got a burn on my leg and got some spider bites and had to go to the hospital in Quito for quite a few days. And during this time, I stayed at Community Hostel and they were very helpful with all that I needed. They also put on different activities every night. I suggest following their Instagram. They post all about their salsa nights, their great food with their great cook, and their bar crawl night, which was fun. It is very easy to meet, a great community and community hostel, so I recommend staying there. From Quito, I met two wonderful girls, and we traveled to Banos, which was, again, one of my favorite places in all of Ecuador and all of South America. They're so much to do in Banos. I actually think it's called the adventure capital of Ecuador. A few of the things that I got to do in Banos was see the hot springs located right in town, rent some bikes, and go waterfall hopping where we saw many beautiful waterfalls, got to party with locals. This was such a spontaneous thing. Just happened to stumble across a zip lining on the side of the road, so we took the opportunity and went, and that was so much fun. In Banos, I stayed at the Eruption Hostel, which I recommend staying there and if it is fully booked you can still go to the crater bar at the very top. It is a rooftop bar overlooking Banos. The hostel was just amazing overall. As soon as we checked in they sent us a email with all the recommendations of things to do, where to eat, cafes to go to, bars to go to, and they would help us sign up for any tours that we wanted like the white water rafting. After a crazy fun time in Banos, me and Christina, one of the girls I was traveling with, went to the Amazon jungle. We had to take an overnight bus and met our tour where we got to get a bow along the Amazon River. It was so crazy and so surreal being in the Amazon rainforest. It was such an affordable tour. I can't remember how much it is but I do have a whole vlog explaining prices and showing you the rainforest. So make sure you check out that vlog. We stayed three nights in the rainforest and woke up to the most beautiful nature noises and we got to do crazy adventures like kayak walking through the rainforest and trekking with these big boots. We got to go on a night walk through the jungle to see all the creepy crawlies and relax by getting to jump into the river or bird watching. It was such an incredible time and I recommend doing the Amazon rainforest in Ecuador. After that we made our way back to Banos just because we were gonna catch a overnight bus to Cuenca which is a beautiful beautiful town I was recommended to by an Ecuadorian friend. I think everybody who I was traveling with at this time was very tired after the Amazon rainforest, after all the partying, that we just had a very chill time in Cuenca. After Cuenca, we took another bus to Guayaquil, which is the second biggest city in Ecuador. We just stayed one night because we had a flight to the famous Galapagos Islands. So when we were planning our trip to the Galapagos, another backpacker overheard and recommended us to fly into one island and out of another. 
color. And this is the biggest tip, biggest hack I could suggest for backpacking the Galapagos. It will save you a lot of time and a lot of money. So from Guayaquil, we got a flight to San Cristobal Island where we got the cheapest hostel we could find on booking.com and spent our days laying out on the beach. One of the days I did splurge a bit because why not go scuba diving in the Galapagos? I am so glad that I did this. This was so cool and such a bucket list thing to do. If you're gonna go scuba diving in the Galapagos, I do recommend doing Kicker Rock in San Cristobal. This is where all of the hammerhead sharks gather during a certain season of the year. This is one of the craziest things I have ever experienced, seeing these hammerhead sharks and being so close to them. And in general, the wildlife in Galapagos, scuba diving or snorkeling, they come so close to you. Kicker Rock scuba diving was quite expensive, but again, so beyond worth it. The following days, we just relaxed and then we took a ferry for $30 to Santa Cruz Island just to get another ferry to Isabella Island. So basically, we spent $60 on ferries in one day that hurt the budget, but this was the best route for us because we spent lovely time on Isabella Island. We rented some bikes and biked the turtle trail, seeing these giant tortoises in the road. We went snorkeling with penguins and seahorses and just in the beautiful wildlife, we got to see the blue-footed boobies. Another thing we did on Isabella Island was climb a volcano. Well, not quite climb a volcano, but climb on top of a volcano or see the crater of a volcano. It was very cool. Nonetheless, it was a bit rainy, so very slippery if you don't have hiking shoes, which I did not, but super cool. All of the details of names and tour prices is in that Isabella vlog on my page. Made our way back to Santa Cruz Island for another $30 ferry. Here, uh, we were just about out of all of our money, <laughs> so we just had a very chill time in Santa Cruz, and I believe we only had one day to too. So we took that day to get a taxi to see the giant tortoises towards the mainland of the island. This was so cool to see how slowly they chew and how slowly they move and just how old those tortoises are. Some are even like 300 years old and that is just incredible to think about that they've stayed on this island and had the freedom to grow. The Galapagos is doing everything they can for conservation of the animals and I appreciate appreciate that so much. So if you hear me say anything in this vlog, it is when you go to the Galapagos, please take care of the environment and the animals around. Be considerate that this is their only home. Please take care and notice that. With that being said, we were flying out of Santa Cruz that next day, back to Guayaquil on the mainland of Ecuador. In Guayaquil, we had to say goodbye to our lovely friend Christina that we were traveling with for a month, and Haisha and I made our way to Montanita Town, which is a beachside town on the Pacific coast of Ecuador. Oh man, oh man, I wish I made a vlog in Montanita to show you the crazy time that we had. We basically just had three days of hanging out at the hostel, enjoying the other backpackers community. There was amazing people staying at this hostel called Kamala Surf Hostel. It is a bit outside of town, so you do have to get a taxi or walk a very long way into town, but the taxi is no more than a dollar and you could always share it with another person from the hostel. I recommend staying at this almost secluded hostel because it builds such a tight community between the people and there was amazing volunteers. You can never really recognize if the volunteers were working for the hostel or if they were just another backpacker. If I ever come back to Ecuador, I would love to volunteer at this hostel. With all that being said, Montanita is a very big party town. Be careful of your belongings. There's a lot of theft and pickpocketing that happens in Montanita town. Just take caution of each other and you will have the best time in Montanita. Anyways, we made our way back to Guayaquil where Haisha and I then split our ways and I moved on to Peru and she went all the way up to Mexico. This was an amazing month and a few days in Ecuador and out of all the countries I've been to on this trip, I really hope that someday I get to come back to Ecuador. Alright, let's talk about transportation in Ecuador. It was very easy to find buses in Ecuador. A lot of them were overnight, which is one of the best backpacker hacks I 
can give anybody is to take an overnight bus so you save money on accommodation and you get to wake up in a new location. Although a lot of the buses in Ecuador happen to not be very safe or a lot of theft was happening, this was during the time of ending of COVID and during a lot of the protests, a lot of the locals resorted to theft. I don't know if this is a normal thing for Ecuador. I really hope not, but just hold on to your belongings. If you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen on my story that when I left Ecuador to go to Peru on that overnight bus, I turned my backpack around, put it over my shoulders, clipped it in the back, and locked my zippers because if they were stealing my backpack, they would have had to steal me too because all of my valuables are in that backpack and they were not going anywhere. So always take caution when traveling in a new country, especially when you are on overnight buses and you want to sleep. As for the language in Ecuador, you might know that they speak Spanish, and a lot of people do not speak English in Ecuador. Ecuador isn't as popular of a backpacking destination as, say, Colombia or Peru, but if you're a backpacker, definitely don't skip out on Ecuador. You will not regret it, but make sure that you know a few phrases or sayings in Spanish that could get you a long way. Even saying gracias or hola will make the locals like you and it will get you a lot further than acting like a stupid tourist. <laughs> All right, let's talk about budget for Ecuador. Before I say my daily budget, because it was crazy for a whole 30 months, <laughs> I meant 30 days. I went to preference that I went to the Amazon for three nights and four days, and I went to the Galapagos for nearly two weeks, which were big costs, but so worth it. Just hanging out in Cuenca or Montanita or Quito really balanced out this budget, but I did spend a total of $54 per day. This was a little over my budget and included all the big buses, flights to and from the Galapagos, transportation to and from the Amazon, and all of the crazy things I did in between. You could definitely get by from anywhere from $40 to $60, I will say, as a backpacker in Ecuador. You could go a lot cheaper than that if you're volunteering somewhere or you could go a lot more expensive than that if you're staying in hotels or resorts in the Galapagos. It's all really customizable to your needs and what you want out of your backpacking trip in Ecuador. Last thing I want to say is I do have vlogs on nearly every place I went to on my entire six months but also in most of Ecuador especially the Galapagos and Amazon vlogs. Make sure you check those out on my page. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video if it helped you out or at all. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!